Welcome everyone. Okay, I, I'm not sure. Am I on yet? I'm just, um, I'm just, I, I don't think that I, um, here we go. Sorry. Uh, welcome everyone. I'm, I'm sorry if I, <laughs> I, uh, I thought that was in my, my introduction. Sorry, Ken, if I've um, um, come on a bit too early. So... Would you like me to give you back the mic to do some introductions there, Ken? Um, just on awakening together. Okay, so um, welcome everyone. And I'm also recording this on a video that I'll put up on my, uh, under my name on YouTube. It's called Kate Greaves, if you'd like to listen to it later. <clears throat> So um, I'd just like to say a little prayer to start with, um, just to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you be in charge. I step back and let you lead the way. I allow you to use this vessel today. I surrender to you. I surrender to your love. I surrender to your guidance. I surrender my body, my voice, my mind. And I just allow you to use me as a conduit to speak. Amen. So, I'm just really grateful for being here to start off with and what I felt guided to do today was um, there's a couple of lessons in the course that um, I felt on my journey with the unlearning, undoing, unwinding, the egoic mind, I found quite um, pivotal for, for this mind. Um, so I'm going to share on three lessons to, of the Course in Miracles of just the different things that gave me a bit more of a focus and a bit more of a practice. So I'm going to start today with the lesson, lesson 185, I Want the Peace of God. Now, what I found, I've, I've shared about this um, when I was being interviewed by Awakening Together, my first time I spoke, but I just thought I'd share again about it because <clears throat> what I found on my journey was that I needed to hear these messages so many times. And, and if you have a look at the text and the workbook of A Course in Miracles, there's I don't know how many pages are in this this book, but it's basically saying the same thing over and over again. And a, a conditioned egoic mind is so conditioned, um, it just takes quite some time to undo it. Now, well, how long that is, is who knows. It takes time on the timeline. And once... The mind, the egoic mind, has dissolved through the total surrendering to what is. And actually, the mind just loves what is in the end. It, it just loves what is because it sees that, that God is, is, is. <laughs> but how do we get there? Um, and so let's start off with putting the focus Where's the focus on my journey? What do I have to really focus on? So our focus needs to be, I want the peace of God, lesson 185. And I'll just read a little bit from this lesson. Um, and I, before I do, I'll just talk a little bit why this lesson is so important. And that's actually Jesus 
um, is going to share with us why it's so important um, is that if we want something else other than the peace of God, we're wanting something to make us happy out of this world. We're looking for another body to speak words or do deeds. And uh, we believe that by those words coming out, maybe a partner saying words like, I love you, uh, I cherish you, uh, what can I do for you? If we're waiting on those words to be said by our partner or another body, if we're waiting on those words to be said, to be happy, we're putting our peace of mind, we're, we're delaying the peace of God by waiting for another body to speak words. So the, so the egoic mind wants, if the, if the other body is not speaking those words, or not doing those deeds, the deeds, the, 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 the actions aren't lining up with what I believe love looks like, then I'm going to be upset because I'm putting my happiness, I'm placing it all, I've taken it all out of my mind and I've said that I can only be happy when this particular person or this group of people act and speak a certain way. So I could suffer for the whole of this lifetime because I'm always waiting for somebody else to act differently and speak differently. And this is what this lesson is bringing us back to, say that if you want the peace of mind, you have to go within. And then it really doesn't matter what the other bodies do or say, you'll be peaceful. And through your peace, you don't know what can be achieved through your relationships with these other people. So he's telling us not to look without, not to, not to wait, not to delay, to go. I think I heard Phil saying, you know, come to God with an empty heart. Of course, there's come to God with an empty mind. I think he meant it's, it's the same thing, just said in a different way saying, I don't know. <clears throat> How, yeah, <laughs> yes. I think it's David or Ken has written, we will be waiting forever. <laughs> yes. um, we will. We will be <laughs> waiting. And we will. And do you, I know um, minds. I don't call them people anymore. I just call, I actually use the word minds. Um, because actually everyone is a mind. They might be uh, appearing as bodies, but they're actually mind because the mind is directing everything that people's actions do. So, you know, I know other minds that are constantly waiting. Oh, thanks, Ken. It is Ken. <laughs> thanks, Ken. Um, minds are waiting for something to be different in the outside world. They're waiting for their bosses to treat them better. They're waiting for maybe their father or their mother to, to change and be nicer and to, um, you know, or their children to, you know, stop drinking or stop taking drugs or stop being with the wrong partner, <laughs> or, you know. So, and, you know, it's just this, um, this world is full of minds sitting around basically saying, this should be different and then I'll be happy. And I think this is when, um, when we've done this for a long, long time and exhausted ourselves with a constant array of this needs to be different. You know, this person needs to change. They need to change what they're doing and saying. And once you really get a really clear, like some clarity of mind where all of a sudden it just go, you just, you just say, what the hell? <laughs> I'm sick of this. I'm, I'm, this is, it's not, um, I'm really sick of waiting. There's got to be a better way. And, of course, the ego's always looking outside. And it was very surprising to me when I really started to seriously study A Course in Miracles to turn within. And when I read this, um, this lesson 185, I Want the Peace of God, um, I obviously read it a couple of times um, 
before I finally got what it was saying. And it was actually another, another Course in Miracles lady that said to me, Kate, this is pivotal. This word pivot comes cupping up this morning or this afternoon or tonight, whenever you're listening. <laughs> it's morning here in Australia. Um, it's pivotal because this sets the focus for our minds. This sets the focus for A Course in Miracles journey. And so I'll just read the first uh, paragraph. To say these words is nothing, but to, but to mean these words is everything. If you, could, if you could but mean them for just an instant, there would be no further sorrow possible for you in any form, in any place or time. Heaven would be completely given back to full awareness memory of God entirely restored and the resurrection of all creation fully recognised. So just in that one paragraph is basically he's telling us that if we actually focus on this as our one focus, we're going to awaken. He's describing the awakened mind. He's telling us that... Um, if you could mean them just for an instant, so we don't even have to mean them for a really long time. And in an instant, of course, he's talking about the holy instant, which is always the now. So we'll hold this present in our mind and when we wander off, we'll come back into this instant and have this as our focus. So he's saying there would be no further sorrow possible for you in any form. And what's form? bodies, cars breaking down. Form is the, the, what we think of is the outside world. So he's saying that um, the form won't be able to bring a sorrow. There'd be no further sorrow possible for you in any form. So even if my body, which is the form, even if my body started to break down, if I've got the peace of God, I've got peace i've got peace of mind i can whatever's going on with this body you'll just be doing what it's doing whether it's got sickness um a disability it's in the script what's going on with the body it's going to be doing what it's doing like all the other forms so then i can see the other forms the other bodies speaking and acting however they're acting and my peace of mind is then not conditional on what they say or what they do. I have the peace of God because I've gone past that. Heaven would be completely given back to full awareness. So as we remember what, what he says in the course is heaven. It's not a place and it's not a state. It's the awareness of perfect oneness it's to do with your awareness it's to do with your mind and the awareness is what well, we call it mind and we call it awareness but these are words that we put to an experience an experience that happens we call it mind but you know how do we describe this mind uh, um, these things can't be described. So heaven would be completely given back to full awareness. So there's an awareness. So we're aware. We've got we've got our minds. Um, we know that we're thinking. We know what our thoughts are. We become more aware of our egoic thoughts. Initially, we don't even know what a thought is. We don't even know. Um, we have to we have to start to get in touch with what are my thoughts, you know, and then then we start to, when we start this journey, I know for me, I didn't even know it had to do with thoughts and then someone said to me, well, Kate, um, can you know what your next thought's going to be? And I thought, no, right now, I don't know what my next thought's going to be. And that was a real, something clicked in that moment and I thought, well, why would I believe the next thought if I didn't know what it was going to be? 
So I might get a thought that comes in that judges someone. But where did that thought come from? Well, we're told it comes from the past. We're told that it's, it's just the past rehashing through the mind. So, you know, it's just old pictures coming into the mind and it's overlaying what is in front of me. So say, for example, I'm with my sister and I'm having a conversation with her. If, in, if I'm having a conversation with her and I'm in my ego, ego mind and I'm referring to the ego mind, I'm only going to ever be referring to the past. And I really could see this because obviously my, my older sister, um, I was I played a part being a younger sister. So I was always referring to her and looking up to her and seeking her opinion. And what I saw was that her and I, it's like we do a dance. We, we, we have, when you come to really see that there's certain um, people in this world that we're doing, this is when, you know, coming from the egoic state of mind, um, we start to realise that we're acting a certain way. So when these people turn up, we, we go into this part, we start referring to the past and we start... Um, our, our behaviour and our words change because we've been doing this particular dance. So, you know, it's like the waltz and I'm following her and she's leading the way. Now, this is the unsettling he talks about in the workbook, that um, as you start to shift away and step out of that dance and you start to respond differently, that other dance partner is going to be... Um, not quite uh, happy, keep you know, because you've been following and they've been leading. And so on this journey, we're just starting to shift away and we might start to lead or we start, may say, let's work together. And that other mind may not particularly like that because they like certain things done a certain way. They're used to this relationship. So on this way, on our path with undoing, we'll, co we'll come across these certain things, this unsettling. And this is why we have to always have the goal of peace of mind, that, that our goal, that our desire is not to have this person like us. Our desire is to be um, peaceful in our mind and to notice where we're people-pleasing to notice where we're fearful of losing the relationship with this other person. So, um, so getting back to I want the peace of God, it's got to be our sole focus. And I was so grateful for the Course in Miracles person that came into my life and directed me to this and said, Kate, this is where this focus is. And once I got that, it really sped up my journey to awakening. Um, and he's, um, he's saying here that um, I was talking about awareness. So this awareness, um, heaven would be completely given back to awareness. So we're living in the awareness. Um, so we're, we're aware that we're one with everything. It says memory of God entirely restored, memory of God. So we're actually remembering God. We're in a mind or we're in awareness where we're remembering God fully and the resurrection of all creation fully recognised. This is what I love about these couple of sentences. They're just, they're just telling us how, what the awakening feels like and what it actually it's describing it in beautiful detail, the resurrection of all creation. So rather than looking at all creation, which is all our brothers, everything here, um, rather than looking at it as separate to me, we're, we're, he's saying that we're going to fully recognise that it's all God, that it's all me, that we're all one, that I'm not separate, that I'm unified. And then we, our mind shifts. So he's telling us that um, he's really, a, he's telling us in this paragraph here that if we can keep our one desire, our one want, 
heart as I want the peace of God, to keep that as our focus, that this is the way home. He's going to help us get there. Now, the next paragraph is quite an interesting one where he says, no one can mean these words and not be healed. He cannot play with dreams, nor think he is himself a dream. He cannot make a hell and think it real. He wants the peace of God and it is given him. For that is all he wants and that is all he will receive. Many have said these words, but few indeed have meant them. You have but to look upon the world you see around you to be sure how very few they are. The world would be completely changed should any two agree these words express the only thing they want. So what he's uh, really pointing to here is that um, if, if you... He says, no one can mean these words and not be healed. So if we really mean them, if we really give up, you've got to get to a state of mind where you give up trying to, what he calls, be your own teacher, <laughs> which is uh, listen to the egoic mind for happiness, as I was talking about before, looking for things outside me to make me happy. So what I need to do is I need to give up wanting people, jobs, anything outside me in this world to make me happy, I need to give that up. I need to completely, uh, in my own mind, just come to a, come to a state where I, where I choose to give up those things. And I really recognise that even when I've had some of those things, I haven't been happy. They don't have any lasting happiness. And I don't know, maybe some people come to this uh, realisation very early on, um, just through, you know, through a, a, you know, on a quick journey here. But for me, it took around 50 years <laughs> to, really, to really get that. And, but, you know, in a way, I'm glad it didn't take 70 years. But if it did, it did. Um, and I think if you're, if you're quite young, this is a wonderful thing to do, to get as early as you can, because um, this journey, this, this coming to this complete surrender of knowing that there's nothing in this world can make you happy. And that's sort of like a realisation. That's when you just sort of come to a state of mind where you just say, hey, I've been doing this, I've been spinning my wheels, I've been looking for um, relationships, I've been looking for material things, I've been looking for holidays, I've been looking to save money, I've been looking for, you know, all these different things that the ego tries to, it tries to give you a constant stream of suggestions of where happiness lies. And it's really, oh, I just look at the ego as just a, as um, somebody that has got no idea where happiness lies, but it's just trying to suggest things and that's why you've got to laugh at it. And the problem is that we take it seriously. We take this, um, uh, we take this thought system seriously and it says, yep, yeah, okay. That didn't work out, you know. You, you, you know, the, the people at work weren't very good, and I'm leaving now. And just an, maybe another job, or another career change, or move house, or move state, or move country. And the ego's always got lots of suggestions of how to fix your life. And this is what we have to come to a state of mind where we really get into a realization that hey, I've done all that stuff. I've been on those holidays. And, you know, part of those holidays for me, I was quite depressed on my holidays. Um, well, because I took the ego mind with me. <laughs> I, couldn't, I got on a plane and went somewhere. But my, my thinking went with me. Uh, and I laugh about it now, but it wasn't very 
very good at the time. And so I just, this light bulb went off when I started reading the course and it says, you know, the ego is seek and do not find. I said, yeah, I've, I've had it. I've looked in all the wrong places <laughs> and all the wrong people. I think there's a song about that. So it's really so relaxing to just oh, breathe out and just say, okay, I want a better way. I, I just, yeah, I'm just going to um, give up this search. And okay, so what's Jesus now guiding me to do? He's telling me to give everything up and just put one focus. I want the peace of God. Okay, so the first thing that's going to come in is the ego's going to say, oh, well, you won't have any love. Um, you'll lose your money. It'll have a whole list of things that it'll bring up fear in your mind if you go for the peace of God. He, the ego is going to tell you that that sacrifice, there's some sacrifice in that. So the ego is not only advising you where it thinks happiness lies, but it's also once you get on the path and you say, okay, I'm going to put this as my focus. It's going to then say, no, 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 don't go there. You'll lose what you've got. Because the ego's thought system is all about lack. And so it's whole, yeah, everything, every, every thought is about shoring up what you have, protecting it, um, and it's telling you that you may not ever get it again and this is as good as it gets. And this thought system, when you really look clearly at it, and you really take the time to get quiet and really explore your mind, which we're asked to do in the course of this. We're asked to really look at our mind, pull it apart. Look at what I'm thinking. Wow, look what I'm thinking today. And look what that thought said. Wow, well, if I believe that, I'd probably be really unhappy today if I believe that thought. And it's really asking us to, to really get clear, really take the time to like be a professor of my mind and only I can do that. And this is accepting the atonement. It's like, okay, let me look what I'm thinking and how are these thoughts helping? And um, as I said, when I first started with the course, I didn't even know uh, that, that I could actually um, be aware of my thoughts. Um, and that, I think that's the first part of the journey is just going, all these uh, teachers I was listening to were all talking about thoughts. You know, your thoughts are like the clouds. And I'm like, I don't even know what my thoughts are. And as I sat with it, and you really need to get quiet with this, whether it's meditation or just sitting quietly, just really get in touch with what, what I'm thinking. And that's the, really the first step of um, becoming clear of what these ego thoughts are and because what we did was we had these thoughts and we forgot to laugh at them. So, you know, these thoughts are going to come and go <clears throat> and we just need to look at it and just say, okay, so what's the ego suggesting today that I do? Okay, the ego suggesting this. Well, that's funny. <laughs> it's like... It's like the GPS is, it's like the faulty GPS. Maybe that's what we could call the ego, the faulty GPS. And the Holy Spirit is the true GPS. Well, once we get in touch with the Holy Spirit in our mind, that's when we start really, you know, it's, it's a guidance system. It's called guidance. And what do you do when you put the GPS in the car? You follow the guide, the guide's getting you there. <laughs> I call it my crazy GPS, and that's Ken, <laughs> Ken saying. The ego goes, the crazy GPS. Yeah, it is crazy. I was, I've always got this analogy that when you, I've shared this before, when you, you're in a new town and <clears throat> you pull up for directions, I've had this happen. And you, you wind down your window and you ask someone, you know, can you tell me where, you know, a cafe is or a restaurant or a road you're looking for, you might be a little bit lost, which we all are. <laughs> and someone wants to be helpful. They really, really want to be helpful, but they don't know where they actually, just imagine you put your window down and 
you're asking someone and they, they so want to be helpful, um, but they've got no idea where it is that you're asking them. So they guess. And they're like, mm, okay, look, go here and I think you should turn here and do this and that. And so what would you do if you wound your window down and you realised that this person was guessing? He was trying to be helpful, but he didn't want to say, hey, look, I've got no idea how to get to that cafe. I really don't know. Really, that's what the ego should say. I really, we should wind our window down and when the ego gives us our thoughts and says, hey, you know, the next job or the next relationship, what we should be doing is we should be laughing at it and saying, hey, thanks for sharing. <laughs> thanks for sharing. <laughs> because it doesn't, we're not, we're not running away from the ego. We're just, we're asked to laugh at it. And if you can get some sort of analogy where you're laughing at the ego, it just, that it just starts to dissolve. So what's Ken said? It never gets me where I ask it, and it and it's always my fault. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. It's it's probably does blame us. <laughs> yeah. So um, so this is so the most important thing is we had the tiny mad idea that we're separate and we forgot to laugh. So we're asking a thought system of where happiness lies and it's giving a constant dribble. It's, it's guessing. Mm, and it's really like a, you know, a mad, crazy system going, mm, okay, today I think happiness lies in quitting your job and getting another one. It's a whole set of new people that don't know you. And I did that for many years. I went from job to job hoping to find happiness and in the end it was my mind that had to change so it's not the world out there that changes it's our mind so he's telling us go within i want the peace of god have that as your focus okay great he's directing us jesus is saying look you have to give up being your own teacher which is learning off the ego resign now as your own teacher follow me Okay, now I'm giving you the Course in Miracles and I'm giving you a place to focus. Focus on I want the peace of God. So whenever you desire someone, desire a new job, desire anything else, okay, I, I hand that desire over to you, Holy Spirit. I give you this desire. It seems to be coming up and I've hooked into it and I now I'm thinking, I'm believing it and I'm thinking, hmm, a new job might be the better way out because all these people at work don't treat me the way I want to be treated. Um, so I'll go, I'll go get another job. This is the ego's thought system. So then when we turn to the Holy Spirit and we say, okay, I'm thinking crazily because I'm looking, I'm looking out at the world, trying to get it to make me happy. And the, and the Holy Spirit saying, hey, come within and I've got a whole thought system that's going to change your mind. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to work with everything that you're upset about. I'm going to work with your mind and I'm going to gently, gently change your mind and I'm going to gently, gently awaken you and just come with me and work with me and join with me. So um, to, the most important thing is no matter what happens on your journey, just keep the focus. I want the peace of God. So this means that I give up wanting to lose weight. I give up wanting anything in my body to change. Even if I'm sick, I give up even wanting to be well. I give up wanting um, my partner to change. I give up wanting people at work to change. I give up wanting um, my parents to change. I give up wanting my children to change. So as you can see, all these wants, wanting others to change or um, circumstances or whatever else, which is the form, um, I have to give up all those wants. I have to give up all those desires. So that's what we're asked to give up. But there's no sacrifice. So what we're saying is I'm just going to allow 
everything to be as it is. I'm going to allow all these characters to be as they are. I'm going to give up wanting them to change. So then I say, my one and only desire is for the peace of God and that comes through my mind. So each, um, each time I have a desire. So what I did on my journey was I worked with one um, character at a time. And the main character that my ego was holding me hostage over was my father um, and my daughter. I had a 18-year-old a daughter when I really seriously got serious about the course and really um, basically read this lesson and, and said, OK, I devote myself to this. I give up. I give up, I completely give up and I'm going to put my focus as I want the peace of God. So when he says to say their words mean nothing but to mean them means everything. So I meant them and what I did was I had um, Bill Thetford, he's got, uh, I had a CD that I bought from um, um, the, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, the Foundation for Inner Peace. <laughs> Um, uh, the, Bill Sefford had read out his favourite lessons and one of them was this lesson, 185, I Want the Peace of God. And I remember listening to it in my car one day and I just sat there and I just heard his words and he, just him speaking meant something more to me. It was like, it, it, like every part of me surrendered, every part of me wanted this peace of God because I certainly didn't have it and I thought I knew deep down that I had done everything I could to try to follow the ego's crazy GPS guidance system as Ken calls it <laughs> the unhelpful helper I'd wound down my window and, I, <clears throat> and asked the person that didn't know but how was I to know that I was going to the wrong thought system I had no idea. I didn't beat myself up because I believed the ego and I was kept changing relationships and jobs and things like that to find happiness. I didn't, I didn't beat myself up for that. I, I just didn't, I was, I suppose what Buddhists would call as ignorance. I didn't know that there was a better way. So now we come to, right, here's the better way. I'm going to go to the Holy Spirit. He's going to help me unwind my mind. He's going to help me unlearn the ego. He's going to help me undo all my judgments. He's going to help me undo my grievances. And each mind has its own path. The Holy Spirit works with us as we are. We have to just have that willingness. We have to come to the conclusion that what we've been doing hasn't worked. We have to actually realise we're listening to the wrong thought system and it doesn't get us anywhere. We have to really think about, am I happy? Am I, well, if this GPS, this, this crazy GPS system, this unhelpful GPS system, and I'm following it, is it helpful? Am I happy? Well, when you start to click, no, I'm not happy. It's not taking me. I don't need to beat myself up because I've been um, listening to it. It doesn't know. It's trying its best. I could just see that this person I've wound down the window, he wants to be helpful. It's telling me. It's not trying to manipulate me. It's just trying to be helpful. And I, I have to laugh at it. And I'll say, okay, well, thanks for sharing. But you're actually not getting me anywhere. You're not actually getting me happy. My mind's not happy. I'm not happy. So um, so he wants the peace of God and it is given him. So when we ask, that's it. That's it. When I asked, when I said, I want this peace of God and I want nothing else and I surrendered, I gave up. And then what happened was it major shifts, major mind shifts. The Holy Spirit really came in and helped me with all the little issues. My father, 
my work situation, my children. He just helped me see everything differently. He just shifted it all around. He got me out of my own fears. He looked, he, he showed me my fears and he, he, he helped me see them differently. He took me beyond death. Um, he showed me that death wasn't real. Um, he showed me that I wasn't a body. He worked very intensely. I gave myself to this process of undoing. I just surrendered to it and I allowed, I allowed my mind to be um, overhauled. We could say it's a bit like a computer system. There was a virus in there and I just allowed, allowed the Holy Spirit to come in and be the virus eraser. <laughs> and then what I've got is I've just got this peaceful mind. So I've got the course has got all the beautiful um, lessons and the, and the um, teachings in it start to illuminate and they're all used. As we go and we do these lessons, that's what he's asking us not to understand them, just to do it. Because as we do and practice these lessons, they're illuminating in a part of our mind and the Holy Spirit's going to use that. Um, he's going to use all these uh, ways of uh, seeing differently uh, to come to a completely new way of experiencing the world. And then what happens is as we just work with the Holy Spirit and say, okay, I've got some fear today, Holy Spirit, this is normal. Um, here, can you help me with this? I'm thinking this and I'm thinking that, but can you please give me another way of saying this? And um, and we just really join the Holy Spirit and, and Jesus. We join with whatever is our mind can accept as a guide. And whatever word, whatever name we want to give it, whatever it is, it's just personal to you and you've got to go in your mind and you have to find that word, that name, that experience. But the most important thing is the surrendering and the, and the desire, the focus. I want the peace of God. I want that awareness of perfect oneness. I want this happiness that he talks about in the Course. I want that peace that never leaves. I want that above all else. I want to see everything differently above all else. I want to see everything differently because then I get to live in this peaceful mind and I want that above everything else. So I'm just going to let everything be as it is for now. I'm just going to let everyone do what they're doing. I'm not going to try and change anyone else and I'm just going to go within and have my mind shifted. So I've talked for um, just over 40 minutes on I want the peace of God. can't believe I've done that. but <laughs> Thanks to the Holy Spirit to really help me with that. I'm really, really grateful for um, just this, the Holy Spirit, how, how this um, mind has um, helped me, um, helped bring this piece of God to my mind. I'm deeply, deeply grateful. Um, so now I'm going to share on, okay, so we've got the focus. We have to 100% give up wanting anything else and we have to only want the peace of God. Then how do we get this peace of God? So I've set my desire and the how is working with the Holy Spirit. But there's really some beautiful lessons in the course um, that, can, that can get us there. Now, I'm just going to read something. If we don't wish for anything, how can God give us the desires of our heart? Okay. So, um, God, the desires of the heart. Now, um, Dee Denny, who's um, written this in, what you've got to understand, Danny, is it, I'm not sure exactly what desires of your heart that you're talking about. So if you are talking about a desire for um, love, to be loved by someone, or if you're talking about uh, any desires of your heart, I'm really sorry, but um, you have to give up every other desire. 
Um, and that's why this is a radical path. Um, he's telling us that we only need to, but what you've got to understand is that you have, when you have the peace of God, you have everything. You have absolutely everything because you, uh, your mind's been healed. You have no desires. You, what happens, you're in love with what is. That, and that doesn't mean that you won't get an inspiring idea to do something or to help someone because when you're living in a peaceful mind, um, the Holy Spirit is working with you. And the Holy Spirit might say, okay, I want you to go and visit this person and I want you um, to, um, well, you generally you'll just get a prompt to go somewhere or someone might call you up and say, hey, can I come and see you? Or you might get a completely inspiring idea like um, what uh, Regina Dawn Akers did to start this Awakening Together Sanctuary, to start a church. You see, this is what happens, is that the minds that are awake um, or awakening, um, as better described, because it's just um, infinite, it's an infinite mind and it's going deeper and deeper all the time. So um, to to if you desire something of your heart, you really have to look at um, what that is because really Jesus is telling us to focus on desiring this peace because then um, you're not desiring anything in the outside world to make you happy because what's happening is this outside world, um, if you really look at it clearly, it's all dust put together it's just little um, things that are falling apart so bodies die um, everything here in form is just going to crumble um, and he's saying don't put your um, desire into anything but this love this love of God in your mind and then um, you'll be helpful you'll be helpful in the world and so there can be an idea that if I only desire the peace of God, that there's going to be a sacrifice, that I'm not going to get love. But what happens is what shifts in your mind is that you actually want to extend love. You're not interested in getting love um, because you realise you are love. There's no need for anybody to act or be any way because you come to the clarity of mind that you are filled with love and giving and receiving are the same. So as I give love, extend love, I get filled up with love. My mind actually, my heart gets really filled with love as I extend love. So uh, that doesn't mean that um, people aren't loving to me because mostly when you're extending love, this, this, this um, not special love, this beautiful, unconditional love of the Christ mind, when you're extending that, when, as you're meeting um, your brother, you're meeting yourself and you're open-heartedly loving and hugging and laughing and just being with others, other minds, in this open-hearted way, you do find that the love that radiates back from them, they, they get the experience and they start to experience this love as they open up to your love. And that's why um, when, when Jesus was here and the Christ mind was in the man called Jesus, um, that's why, you know, he, he had so many people adoring him because his mind was just full of, his mind was just completely full of love. His heart was full of love. And it, this love and this peace, mind and this joy is not conditional on anyone, any other form being a certain way. So I hope that um, I don't, uh, Dee Danny, I, I'm not sure whether um, when you say, how can God give us the desires of our heart? I say, thank you, I have enough love. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I hope I've um, answered that. You have to be really clear because the ego will sabotage this, I want the peace of God. It'll tell you that, oh my God, if I put that as my one focus, I won't get any love. So um, 
you have to be really aware that the ego is going to um, have its little say about this focus that I'm talking about. And what we have to do is we just have to move away from that and just, just keep the desire. I'm going for the peace of God. So um, I haven't got much time left, <clears throat> 10 minutes. I'm going to leave the next lesson. Uh, I, and what I'll do is I'll share about it next week. And the next lesson, um, this is the how. Um, one of the, this is a really beautiful practice and I'll share, uh, I feed my ego to the crocodiles, Danny <laughs> said. <laughs> That's good. Do whatever you need to do, however you need to do it, I think. Because um, the ego is nothing, but we believe it into existence. That's so true. We believe it into existence. It's actually nothing. It's not even a thing. It's no thing. <laughs> um, but because we're believing its thought system, it's, um, it seems real. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so um, next week I'll share in detail on lesson 153. In my defencelessness, my safety lies. Uh, this is a really crucial lesson. For, well, it was for me, so that's why I'm going to share. I can only really share on what, what was helpful for me. Many people, I really love listening to other people who share on particular lessons that were very helpful. <clears throat> so this, in, this is um, a practice. Um, hey, we have to actually practice defencelessness. And I'll just read um, a quick one, less, one um, line from Lesson 153 at the start of Paragraph 4. Defences are the costliest of all the prices which the ego would exact. So uh, the Christ mind is telling us that when we get defensive, it's the costliest of all the prices the ego would exact. So this is um, another thing that we can really hone in on, that um, the focus needs to be giving up wanting anything else and just want the peace of God. So we go for that. And we mean that. We have to mean it. And the second thing is that, okay, he's telling us that being defensive is the costliest thing to keep our ego in place. So we want to unwind, undo the ego mind. So he's telling us, I'm going to tell you a practice. And if you practice this, it's going to be very helpful. I won't say anything more, but if you'd like to, that's lesson 153 if you want to read that before next week. Um, so, got a few more minutes. I might just um, read one of the prayers from down the back of the book, which I call, it's just the lessons in the last, I don't know, 50 or 100 lessons. I call them the prayers. <coughs> um, they're really beautiful because what they're doing is they're, these, um, these lessons are really bringing together all the other lessons of the course and they're really giving, uh, just reiterating, I suppose you could say, the themes of A Course in Miracles. And what I'm doing is I'm just flicking through the book now to see if something, if the Holy Spirit's just going to guide me. Okay, so this, I've just alighted on something and it feels right, like I might read it out. And it's Lesson 305. And I just looked and it had the word peace in it. And we were talking about peace of God. So I'm just going to read this. There is a peace that Christ bestows on us. Who uses but Christ's vision finds a peace so deep and quiet, undisturbable and wholly changeless that the world contains no counterpart. 
comparisons are still before this peace. And all the world departs in silence as this peace envelops it and gently carries it to truth. No more to be the home of fear. For love has come and healed the world by giving it Christ's peace. Father, the peace of Christ is given us because it is your will that we be saved. Help us today but to accept your gift and judge it not, for it has come to us to save us from our judgment on ourselves. really beautiful and Christ's vision um, Christ's vision is a way of vision that's um, it's really the forgiveness that the course, talk, the course talks about um, Jesus gives us it's um, actually when when we um, move into seeing with our Christ mind which has nothing to do with um, seeing or hearing um, when we're using um, when we're using our mind when we're with anyone else or anything we're perceiving through our Christ mind to their Christ mind and he says in the course only Christ minds can join so we're joining with this one Christ mind and that's what Christ vision is and when we find that, when we actually perceive our brother um, as the perfect Christ self that he is, um, this, this, it's actually our minds that are getting this Christ love. It's our minds that are awakening to its Christ mind. And it's saving. This, um, it's saving us from ourselves. Uh, from our judgment on ourselves so um, I think I'll finish there I just um, will just uh, say once again um, that um, to to keep the focus um, your focus with the course in miracles you keep coming back to I want the peace of God and when you start to desire anything else in this world to change, to just keep bringing you back, I allow you to be as you are. I don't want you to change. I just want the peace of God. Holy Spirit, help me see this person differently. Help me, what is the truth here? Um, so as just to go into um, our minds when we want something to change, which is the forgiveness to us, the Holy Spirit, because I want the peace of God. I don't want this person to change. I want to see what I'm projecting in my mind. Please, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me with my mind. Help me with my thinking. Help me become aware of my thoughts. Help me with my beliefs. What beliefs do I have? My thoughts come from my beliefs. Just this constant going in, um, the, focus in, the focus is changing my mind. That's how I get the peace of God, through having the atonement. The atonement is the correction to my thinking. That's what the atonement means in A Course in Miracles. It doesn't mean at one moment. It means a correction to my mind, the thinking in my mind. It's correcting, undoing dismantling the ego's mind in my mind okay so the hour's up and thank you everyone for having me here blessings and i always say this lovely prayer when i'm with any group or on my own i love you i bless you and i honor you as the perfect christ that you are and um thank you i'll just give the mic over now Thank you and deep gratitude for uh, all the people here on Awakening Together and all you do. Love you. Bye-bye.
Okay, so sorry, I <laughs> forgot to turn that off. That was the end of it. And I was listening to the, um, there's, a, there's a, an announcer that comes on after. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm not sure how to, I can't, I don't know how to edit this recording, but um, um, so thank you for staying here with me and um, have a beautiful day. And I love you. 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 Bless you. Bye-bye. I'm stopping the recording now. <laughs>